Welcome to episode 76 of Let's Talk Geek. In today's show, habitable planets, this one 600 light years away in the Kepler 22b system, porn in South Africa, and Android celebrates its 10 billionth app download in the Android market. Welcome everybody to episode 76 of Let's Talk Geek. In tonight's show, we have a guest who is not necessarily a guest. Um, yeah. Well, two guests <laughs> two <laughs> are necessarily <laughs> guests. Like two regular guests that are on other shows and one who has uh, moved on to greener pastures in Cape Town. So uh, in the studio, we've got Gareth Vermeulen. Hello. Gareth mixes for Let's Talk Sport on and, Tuesdays and, and LTL Afrikaans on Thursdays. Yes, there is a show tomorrow night. Come cake some. And on Skype, because Google As Hangouts is like ridiculously laggy, at least when I've tried it. Yes. Um, we've got Stu. How's it, guys? Cool. How's it going, Stu? Nice to have Stu. you on the show again. Cool. Yeah, it's great to be back, man. Cool. Cool. And I'll, I'll, I'll start making a bit better plan now that um, I've got my ADSL sorted out. So as soon as I move into the new place, we can what, what, make a plan. S then. Since your ADSL is sorted out, ours isn't. Yeah. Because we haven't had ADSL so before. We're, we're streaming over LTE tonight. I, so. actually, I actually cannot complain. Um, I was really dreading uh, getting a telecom line set up and all the rest. So I went into a telecom on Saturday and um, spoke to a guy. He phoned me Saturday afternoon to confirm that my application had gone through. Scary. Uh, Monday scary. morning, the line was active. Wow. <laughs> that kind of efficiency we've had in Centurion, it's just all of a sudden, like all, this, all these line outages in Centurion, and now nothing gets fixed. And then I did my ADSL through, uh, what's it, AfriHost, and like two weeks, and the ADSL's on. Scarily so, good. Yeah, yeah I, I was actually quite shocked. Well, look, talking about that, okay, ours is, because Telcom sucks, we're obviously using alternate means. I must give a shout out to MTN's LTE, and we want it, because uh, 20 megs down, 16, 16 megs oh. up. Why did it get <laughs> congested? That's crazy. Yeah. Ah, so it, it's good now, but also remember that it's trial now, so they'll give you the best they can. <laughs> okay, let's say it drops down to one meg up. <laughs> That's still good. I'll still take it. I'll take it. I'll take it. Cool. Okay. All right. So th that was. <laughs> I'm Jan Vermeulen. I'm a staff writer at My Broadband. Kill him now. <laughs> Co-hosting with me today, we've got Tim Hawk and Hi. Johan Els. Hello. Yeah. If you haven't seen us before, you're not watching enough of our shows. Go back and watch <laughs> some. Yeah. But but don't click away. Keep this open. Open a new tab. Finish this one, <laughs> and then once it's done, just start. You know, episode. Well, look on the right hand side. And and just keep see, going. You'll see some recommendations and just follow those. Cool. Uh, event. That are happening? Yes. Christmas. Uh, Christmas. Christmas. <laughs> Holiday. <laughs> Can't wait. Everybody, holidays. Yeah, everybody's blowing a ton of money on people they <laughs> see once a year over Christmas. Yes. <laughs> Another feeling. I still Good need times. to go buy some of the presents. Anyway, yeah, it seems, I mean, the events have all wound down. Everybody's really going on holiday from the 16th. Yeah. So Don't order anything in, from the postal system at the moment. I have two packages that I ordered at least three weeks ago, and they just... I in, in transit, and so it's not that they've disappeared. Yeah. They're just not arriving. I, so I ordered Korea. something a week and a half ago. I still don't have confirmation that it's even at the warehouses yet. So, so. I mean, they, they told me from the start, don't expect this to be delivered anytime sooner than like the second week of January. Yes, that's, that's what I'm expecting <laughs> to get ours. Yeah, fair enough. All right. Uh, should we go directly into our topics? Yes, let's do that. So first up. <laughs> of course, porn. <laughs> yeah. Um, Why? have to open with that. <laughs> <laughs> whoa, wait. wait, 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 wait. Your is interested. <laughs> yeah, so 24-hour. Well, the first one was uh, the stories of a 24-hour porn channel coming to South Africa. And uh, the other one is Top TV confirming that um, they are bringing three porn channels online, courtesy of Playboy TV. Or Play. Classy. So, so they've basically got six channels on top TV then. Well, you know, sports was taken. What else is there? Yeah, yeah, shame. And and the guys from top TV because it's a big it's a big issue, and so they often get asked. Listen, yeah. when is the sports coming? Because they've been asked about this, like the HD. Uh, by the way, they've also pushed that out. They said that the soonest they will launch a PVR because they promised it for 2011. And then uh, that didn't happen. 
Um, and they actually promised it for 2010, I think, and then for 2011. And now they've said that the soonest the PVR will launch is in 12 months. So the soonest Your we'll wing. see a PVR on Top TV and by extension HD, I think, is the end of 2012, so probably 2013. Did, with, without kill, killing the fact that I know quite a bit what's going on there, um, do you do know that they also announced this week that the Sirius satellite is getting launched eventually? Yes. So, so they're getting more capacity, HD. And then they the can online, start yes, looking yes. at yeah. HD. So that was actually quite quite cool to hear that they that they yeah I, th- I don't know if we did the story no, last that, week the serious satellite. Um, satellite got r- the bus um, got SES, delayed. ACS Africa got it delayed. Yeah, it was supposed times, to be up so it wasn't this their year. Fault. No, uh, last year. Okay. 2010. 2010. Okay. So from then reference, year, we can understand year. they need more bandwidth to deliver to HD. To deliver HD. They, PVRs. That satellite is full. Yes. Okay, well, cool. They could have brought PVRs without. <laughs> so they, they could always anyway. steal uh, some of the satellite space at this other uh, pirate channel. That's also announced they're going to broadcast yes. uh, porn TV. So these, into are, these are the 24 hour porn guys. They, they, it, it's a South African company called ASI, um, I think African Satellite Installations or something like that. Um, and they've announced what? that they, they're going to they're bring porn satellite television to South Africa. And the, the, the advert was big. It's like calling all top TV customers. All you have to do is unplug your top TV decoder, you use the dish, you plug in the PSAT TV thing and it and it runs over the same frequency it's from the same satellite <laughs> yeah it's from the same it's astra 4 i think or something right? i'm sure four. someone wasn't yeah. happy about that uh, anyway so top tv came out strongly against that because because um you know and so i called the casa and i'm like look because firstly that these guys they raised my ire completely these guys because the the south african representative said yeah no PSAT tv is based in france so south african authorities have no jurisdiction over them i'm like oh hell oh, no. no so i called the casa up and I'm like, listen, these guys are saying that they can broadcast in South Africa with impunity. Do they have a license? And he said, and that's when I found out that ODM has applied for three porn TV licenses. Okay, well, what's the answer on the other guys? They Probably don't. Could. Well, So Top, Top TV has come out strongly against them, said yes. that if they broadcast on Top TV's frequency, they are violating Top TV's well, license. They, can't, they physically can't broadcast on Top TV's frequency. Yeah, so okay. they, won't, they won't be... We'll be on the same satellite, so where Top TV is going to lose is that they subsidize those installations. So now anybody can go and pay 99 Rand, get your uh, dish installed, unplug Top TV, cancel that subscription and go on to the other platform. Yeah. And I'm so happy Top to TV discuss with a cost about is it legal, where the legality comes in, you can go to the States, go buy a decoder, come back, put up a 9, me- a nine meter C-band dish and watch the American channels, you're not breaking any laws. Where it comes in is that Americans can't sell you the decoder in South Africa. Okay. So, but the fact is, I mean, yeah, so you can't operate as a broadcaster in South, in South Africa, Africa But nothing without stops license. your subscribers to pick up that channel. Yeah, but yeah. how are they going to, how are they going to get those decoders to people? Yeah. So if I order across, to come from overseas. across the internet to a site sitting in Botswana, is that legal? And this is where Sorry? if, okay, Sorry. I go and put a website and everything gets posted from Botswana. So that, you know, it's just outside the border. Uh, I put up the website. I advertise throughout South Africa. Here's a yeah. thing. It's competing. Order across. It's all legal. All yeah. legal. The, the, there are two things, though. Top TV. You need the license in Botswana. So you must just make sure Botswana's not going to take care. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm thinking more that you Think don't. about Silver Sands Casino that was operating out of Swaziland for how long? But that's and, illegal. And, and uh, no, poker. No, now it's illegal, yes. Yeah, but I mean, so they came down on them. And the problem is, is that it, it affects our laws and it actually makes, it messes up our legal system. But I mean, there's two things here. The first thing that Top TV said was that these guys, by saying that people should unplug their Top TV decoder and plug another thing in, it's unlawful, apparently. It's ba- breaking the contract you have with them. Okay. Um, so the last time that I mean, don't panic. Um, with the guys that was advertising heavily to use the DSTV decoder to pick up some channels that was also linked out of um, outside of South Africa, and the only way the DSTV got them shut down was simply because of um, the advertising they were doing, where they were actually saying that take take our equipment and use it for your use. Other than that, there was no broadcast license issues. There was no uh, ECN. And, uh, yeah, ECN, ECN So the, the, here is where I say, what Icasa, if Icasa wants to stop this, you know, without having to go through a massive legal rigmarole, they need to talk to their buddies in customs. And every single time one of these uh, decoders Decoded gets shipped them. in from overseas, they go, eh. Um, I think wait, this wait. needs 100% duty. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, it looks like well, 100% duty. If it doesn't have the Icasa proof sticker, send it back. Because hey. do, don't do a class approval on that decoder. Yeah. My, my question, though, with that is I have friends who, who are bringing in their own decoders. Mm. 
legally for for paid DSTV, but it gives them a lot of other features, so streaming and all the rest of it, and recording and. You can't get DSTV on a non DSTV decoder. Yes, you can. Um, you're not supposed to. <laughs> okay, I'll leave it at that. But okay. <laughs> you, you I, can. I I remember I deal a lot with those guys. They've made very sure that you're not supposed to be picking up. Any DSTV channels um, without a DSTV decoder. I, I can quite. No, I know, but there are guys doing it. Say that you can do it. Uh, yes, I, the cam modules is not supposed to be working on anything else. But let's keep on. <laughs> <laughs> We're not trading we'll a very. We'll take this offline. Very dangerous I, I, I crowd. Say I, I've, I've never seen how it's done. I have not in it's any way involved. It's a too. It's not that difficult. It's algorithm. It's just you want to you want to get yourself got the into smart serials. card. Mm. Then you just need the algorithm. Card. It's all the algorithm. I did, yeah. I did and then look, they've got a legit smart card, so they are yeah, using exactly. a legit smart card. So you card. pop the smart card, and it's got your key on it. Runs it through the algorithm, decrypts the signal. Yeah, yeah. no problem. Yeah, but that's why. I mean, let's not get stuck. Anyway. Yeah, sure. But um, sticking with uh, uh, awesome legalities. Um, so now, how do I follow up on this story? You guys can run a follow. I want to find out about this. Uh, yeah, well, well, we'll keep on it. The PSAT TV guys. I, I try to contact them directly. By the way, I left a message and everything, but they've gone to ground now. I think, but they they refused to talk to me on the day that the news broke. They, 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 they probably didn't take too my many calls. calls. They, that, uh, I mean, exactly. The phones. Li- literally, I got a busy signal the whole time. I tried to call them. No email address that I could find. Um, so I'll just I'll fire off something to the, like their general info at asi.com or whatever they are um, and see what comes back. But uh, I cool. think they went to ground. I just want to mention some things though with the top TVs one. Um, with this thing, it's not just – they're not just turning on for all their subscribers. You've actually got to go and request mm. that your decoder will decode oh, this. Okay. Right. And then uh, is there a pin And there's a, a pin on top of that. No. Um, and they won't dec- – Encrypted unless there's a pin. Okay. And if you need your pin reset, you've well, got to go phone through and get the whole. So they're roll. taking that whole. So they are actually following a lot of due diligence in this. Yeah, so yeah. And, and you can't just get it. You have to actually pay it. Ask for it. Yeah. 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 Ask okay. for it. Prove that you're over 18. Well, that whole well the, nice thing, contract. the nice thing about Top yeah. TV is the fact that by default, that decoder is parental locked. So if you actually. Yeah, you've got to go switch it off, which is like a good thing. I think it's a very good thing out of the box. Mm. Um, out of the box, you. You hit a movie that's 18, anything, it's locked. You've got to put in the yeah. And, and uh, in fairness, uh, like uh, I've got uh, to say, Top TV had to do something. Um, yeah. at, uh, yeah. And porn is a great way to make money. No, no, I've got no problem with them doing this. Uh, kudos to them. Go for it. It's something that nobody else well, in let this me know country what the channel is doing. Um, <laughs> my, my, my one response to that whole thing about the parental lock is, now I have my parents who want to watch a movie. Yeah. And it's locked out. So they're going to phone me and I'll have to go... Uh, yeah, I don't know how to explain to you how to, like, what the pins are and all the rest of it. Well, zero, 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 zero by it's default. It's zero, zero, zero. Yeah. But then zero. some six-year-old kid's going to work it out. It's, by default, parental lock's on. I mean, yeah. it's, it's... But, I mean, you can leave parental... You can take parental lock off, off and then just yeah. not subscribe to the porn channels. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Anyway, um, so <laughs> I, I wanted to stick with, with some awesome legalities because um, the National Consumer Commissioner has decided to take our cellular providers, no one else take note of this, to task for having no data rollovers on their prepaid products. Oh, thank you. Um, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> just the cellular guys. What about the rest what of them? What about ADSL providers yeah. and all that stuff? So um, the thing is, uh, I, I've, I had already done an article about this some time ago because when the CPA got released the first wait, time. Wait. I've got something more important. Never mind the yes. for us. Why not the health train? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like you, you, you buy credit from the Gau train and it's only valid for 10 days. The, yes. the first one is valid for 10 days. The other one is, what, 35 days? Yes. I think. Or something like well, that. Wh- why not? Yeah. Well, launch enough. Let's just start with this. <laughs> <laughs> Let, let's go with this. Cool. Sorry, anyway, yes, section yes. 63 of the CPA states that prepaid vouchers, credit, and similar devices do not expire until a period of three years after the date on which it was issued, right? So I actually, when the CPA was first released, this obviously, like, I mean, flag, like, this, cool. yeah, this yeah. is an obvious question to ask, spoke to our technology lawyery guys, Michelsons, and they said that um, if you look at this, they're talking about, and if you take it back to to what it's referring to, it's talking about a physical voucher. It's talking about if you go to a shop and you go, I'd like to buy airtime, please. And they issue you a voucher, physical, that voucher needs to be valid for three years. Mm-hmm. But the second you load it, it's over scoot over. Then they, can, they, then they can have that last as long as they want it to last. Now look, so um, now that said, the, the, this was months ago that I did this article. Now that said, the, the, the National Consumer Commission has still decided to go after 
the cellular providers. Well, so the argument with the cellular providers is you go buy airtime, you pay 250 rand for that airtime, then you go buy data. So it's not the contract guys or any of those. It's where you actually, yes. now you're converted to data. Now you've got to use it in 30 days, so you lose it. Well, it, it's also, it's also, 60, it's yeah. also it's with the contract increased. guys. Like I, I, Bottom line. Um, I, mean, I, I bolt on a data bundle to my contract because yeah. I don't actually get one with my contract. At the end of the month, that expires if I don't use it. So I, can't, I don't subscribe to a bigger data bundle but because I know. pay for it. Yes. That's the bottom line. But it's all about exactly. I pay for it. Paying any. for a service that they decide you must use it in 30 days. Look, now, now the reason I can see, though, having to do this is they need to provision a search amount of bandwidth. Yes. So let's say and they, they go by. Breakage. Let's not beat about the bush. They need the breakage in order to make the product work. Yes. So To be, to be able to make it cheap enough f f for, the, for the masses. Okay, but the they put it's not. the money back yeah. as a credit. Don't just keep it. So no, but if let's say when the airtime expires, uh, you can't just keep keep my money. Give me my money back. Put okay. it back in against but my account. If I then want to spend it on data again, do you have enough space in my network that if you choose to use that data, right? Yeah, I need to pay for that network. So I've you've told me that you in buying that you said this month I'm going to use it. So I then provision enough space for you. Mm. You then at the end of it choose not to use it, but I've still paid for the bandwidth that will give you the bandwidth for that month. It's like, it's like Except electricity. You don't know you exactly when they're going to use it, even in those 30 days. So if everyone decides to use their cap at the same time, Which is you're still going to get that too. network. Yes. Lost that so amount. they still don't provision enough for everyone to use their bandwidth at the same time. Now look, the, Stu wants, yes, to, say Stu something. wants to say something. Way in, Stu. Okay, all I was going to say is, isn't it just the fact that they're relying on people not to use their full data cap? To make yes, more money. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. That's what it is. It's got nothing to do with provisioning and stuff like that. It's just they're relying on you to use only 50% of whatever their metrics say they, the, the average consumer uses. So they can charge less. They can charge 50% less for the bandwidth because they know on average only 50% of it is going to be used. Yeah. No, Except look, I have a sneaky suspicion they're not charging 50% less. No, no, no. 50% is a complete exaggeration. It's just for an example. Yeah. 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 Where, where this, though... It does actually really come play. It's not the Vodacom, it's not the big players. But you get a lot of the smaller ISPs. And they do work with these models. They tend to buy, you know, if, if you, they sell you a gig, they tend to buy a gig for you. Um, and in that, th there's, a, there's a cost. Mm. So, yes, it, once you get the big guys that have pipes and all the rest of it, it's not. No, but, but, but there's a lot of small guys who are basically per, kicked out the wa water. Smaller plant. ISPs or any ISP doesn't pay per... Um, per you know, per megabyte, they pay per megabit per second. They pay for bandwidth. No, it depends what they, they resell. Sorry, they can. Yeah, it depends. Like you've got yeah. guys oh, okay. who you got guys who buy bandwidth and they build products around bandwidth, and then you've got guys who just resell products. Like they buy a product from okay. IS. So they buy, a, you know, IS accounts or something. Yeah. And they just but, resell but that's them. up to the wholesaler. I mean, this whole thing will just affect the wholesaler anyway. Yeah. So yeah. Cool. Anyway. Yeah. Cool. So that's going to be interesting. And I, I actually secretly hope that the NCC makes this work. Um, Me too. I think three years is too long, but longer than the end of the next month. Six yeah. months. Something. Something. So, anyway. And I want them to do it to Caltrain. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I would drink to that because I've actually now started doing that with the Caltrain loading up for the week just because it, it's 10% cheaper. But except I know I have to use it in this week. So well, I know that for next week, when you know the week kind of ends a little bit early, I can't load up for another week, or now I have to go sit down and budget. Is it cheaper to just go prepaid, or should I just buy enough for the week and know I'm not going to use two trips? Well, I was looking at it as well, and the thing is, I, are you going to use four trips? I can only use the car chain three times a oh week. Oh, dear. <laughs> so any advantage I would get from buying a month's ticket, I will lose. So I'll be paying yep. as much as if I paid for three days. Yeah. Yeah. So I want to still buy the month ticket because I'm willing to – Pay up front and yes. get all that. I just want to have a longer period of time to use it. Anyway, cool. This one, uh, this one was injected by the the Kharet. Um Take it away, sir. Uh, okay. Well, uh, it won't be very long. It's uh, in in Unity in Ubuntu, the the new interface uh, called Unity, which a lot of people hate, a lot of people don't hate. How's it there, in eleven? There's a hater. <coughs> it's I'm a hater. It was, it was another in, hater. It was bad in ten. It Is was it buggy in, in ten. It's better now, but it's still not perfect. So. They've, they've improved a lot, and they've added a lot and fixed a lot of the bugs, yeah. but they're still sort of getting there. But yeah. they're sticking with it. 
which is something that uh, a lot of people don't like. And, you know, other people, uh, I'm going good on them. They're sticking with what Kathonic they set Demon out to do. Demon and I had an interesting discussion on this. Uh, Chthonic Demon is uh, Carl, Sandrock? Carl Sandrock from uh, UP. Um, okay. And uh, my big problem with Unity is app discoverability. So yes. for the most part, you know, for, for when you just, you know, when you hit Windows key or whatever it is mm. and you type, because that's how you get to an app. Yeah. Is you, you open the menu and then it's not like a start menu. It just opens up like a search box, basically, and then you start typing. Yeah. And that's cool because that's probably the fastest way to launch an app. But like if you want to discover, you know, like you've just installed your brand spanking new Ubuntu system, you uh -huh. don't know what Shuttleworth, because now he's yoinked out Banshee and he's replaced it with Excel or whatever the case might be. Now you don't know what your default music app is. I mean, you might well, want to search I, for music. I must say, if you, I have noticed, yeah, if you search for music if you search or for sound. Like music or sound or, but or now image. I, but now or, I'm used to Banshee and I type ban and goes nothing. I'm like, hey, that was my music player. That's so, what they're trying to say. This is just got to change your mindset. You want to go yeah, music you player. Go a little bit more I, I, generic. I also agree with Jan because I tend to end up installing 20 million applications and then I actually forget what I've installed. Yeah, no, I, I do kind but of agree I, with I, that. I am that more idea of a power user, but so I still want to have an, a way of accessing a menu of what's installed. It well, is still there. It just takes a couple of clicks isn't for it you to get to. So program? you have to open up the, the you, physical you, menu and then you have to go apps, all apps, you, and make it. It's like three clicks to make it show all the apps and then you get a scrollable you, list. You, yeah, but I'm going to have to scroll through everything. It's not, yes. no, normally in the menu you would say, okay, internet apps. This is it with internet. It has those sections as well. Have you tried to use it? Yes. It's a pain, painfully, painfully it's the painful. Same, it's the same sections as what's always been in Ubuntu with the menu at the top. You push what the thing, you point? have applications. Yeah, it's, anyway, it's, in Unity, you have lenses that you can use to search through specific stuff. So they have like a music lens yeah. that links in with Banshee. So it searches through your music, uh, your, your, your local music that you've loaded music into Music library or music applications? Library. Okay, yes. But you've loaded it in, into Banshee. So okay. you, that's your music library. But... Because Banshee also links with a couple of music stores, it searches through those as well, which is kind of cool. Even though Banshee sucks, <laughs> we, we won't go into that. Are you sure you um, want to be sitting next to each other tonight? <laughs> Banshee sucks. <laughs> Banshee sucks. Oh, but I, you I said you use Banshee. Yes. No, I was oh, so, using so, as an example. Uh, I think it's on the screen now. So these, those things at the bottom. Uh, are the lenses. So if you click on those icons, then you can search for specific things. Oh, I didn't have okay. that in my in version 10. Okay, it's, interesting. Yeah, I think it's fairly new. So okay. what they've done now, what a guy has gone and done is he's made a Pirate Bay lens for Unity. So you can literally, from your desktop, you can search through Pirate Bay torrents. Cool. Which is pretty cool. Right. Coming into my problems with the search, yeah. it takes 30 seconds to a minute from when Ubuntu logs in before I can search through my apps. Yeah, I guess it has to load them up first. Yes. No, but why not catch them? So it them? makes the, the boot There's up little a little things bit like that. The fact that they've moved the like close say, button to the left. It's always been on the left. And the slider on the left. So when I go up to close the button, I'm actually going to go too far to the left. I get a slider that pops out over the damn close button. Oh, oh okay. Okay, my, my tip is I've got Reverend. Install XFSC. Scarily, scarily. You're just going to, after coming from Unity, it's like, wow, this is fast. It is beautifully beautifully I used fast. to love XFC when I, in my Debian days that was the desktop um, I used. you can very change how the, the, the taskbars work go for it anyway next topic I've still got <laughs> I, Windows I love this topic. image in the car if anybody needs one <laughs> we, 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 well th that's worse <laughs> yeah I love this topic and we don't really need to say much about it um, I'm stealing the headline from the register the register if anybody's interested Facebook bug exposes Zuckerberg's, Zuckerberg's privates what? <laughs> Please say that's not literal. No, it's not literal. No. Okay. Um, uh, so basically, there, there was a bug in the. No, keeping not the, even Zuckerberg the, trusts keeping uh, the general Facebook Keeping the general theme of porn this week uh, because oh, the, okay. the, the, the dot triple X um, uh, domains also launched this week. Um, oh, is that yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so yeah. keeping with the general. And Sorry, we've got our porn Stuart? sites. Hey, no, no, I'm just saying yes. I saw the do, uh, triple X domain was up finally after lots and lots of fights. Stew dot triple X. I, I found it quite funny that someone, uh, a guy on Reddit, registered the West, Westboro Baptist Church, dot triple X, and it, it, it's not Westboro Baptist Church. <laughs> <laughs> so he has some ideas what to do with that. Uh, there's, there's a thread on Reddit. You should go check it out. I'll go check it out. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, and so, um, and so there, there was a problem with the Facebook report as not safe for work or mm. a report as, you know, uh, inappropriate button for photos. So you could go to anybody's profile, click report as inappropriate, and it'll bring up a list of all their photos, even the ones set to private. Ooh. So what they did was they went to Mark Zuckerberg's profile and they nabbed a bunch of pictures off that. 
And so, uh, like for instance, there's one of him. I don't know if you, if any of you know. There's a, Mark Zuckerberg is doing a thing this year. Like he's doing a thing he every year. He's killing all his own food. So if, it, if he doesn't kill it himself, he doesn't eat it. Yeah, right? about that. So th- he's got standing there with like a dead chicken. Turkey. Turkey. To turkey key. I think it's uh, they just had, um, Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Cool. Anyway, yeah, because he, like, he, like, yeah, he yeah, killed the chicken as well. <laughs> yeah, he's like, clearly you did not grow up so, on him. <laughs> not on this side of the world. Yeah, yeah. That side of the world's a big deal. Yeah. Just well, don't it depends. Go, I don't know about in America. I mean, they're pretty gun nutty over there, hey? Depends which state, I think. Yeah. Pretty, pretty much down south is, is Zuckerberg. He's a hero down there, I'm sure. No. I don't think he killed the turkey with a gun, though, but he has shot something. Like, he learned how to work oh, a gun. Yeah, he has, shot he's something. killed uh, cows. If you know, he used a big bowie knife or a, or a crossbow or something, it all counts. <laughs> indeed, indeed. Anyway, so I, I don't know if you guys have My, my thing, I'm sorry, I'm just add to this. This cool. whole thing, he's doing this whole thing to be green and eco friendly. And when, if you're killing your own food, it's one of the most wasteful things you could do because you, most of the, the, the what's left over, you're not going to eat all the meat. Okay. So there's huge, in, in let's say, well, the yeah, poultry they industry, of they'll all the make bologna, like the chicken oh. feet goes off to China, and they, they pretty much use every single piece of everything. Mm. Walkie so talkies, bro. I mean, I mean, here nothing goes to waste. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Into the next topic. Google's graphic calculator. You no longer oh. need Wolfram Alpha to plot graphs. Yeah, I was actually wondering about this. Are they plugging into Wolfram? No, and no, just no, putting no. The, themselves. So it's their own thing. Come on, Google plugging into Wolfram it's Alpha. It's very sad well, that they... I like Wolfram Alpha. and yeah. so, But Wolfram Alpha, I mean, it, because it's a very specific search Google engine. Google taking over the internet one site at a time. It's very sad. One service at a time. Well, they're not quite taking over. They're taking up some of the functionality. Which, yeah, it, it's just that they find that this is useful to people. It so is it's it's something that some people actually okay. Google. Is it actually and why available? Or will we just yeah. No, no. Yeah. That, that what you see there, that's an actual Google screen. You can Google that equation and get that for those picture. in the in the audio what we are looking at are equations oh, right, using right. using keywords like abs for absolute value we'll and S- S- sqrt for square root Steel. drawing various heart shapes still we'll give you the formula quickly if you want to take this down abs bracket <laughs> x bracket minus <laughs> bracket, you, you have to specify minus open and close bracket. bracket she said yes it's it's okay, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right um i wanted to uh, while we're on the topic of of code and formulas and well, stuff. Sorry, sorry. It's yeah? just like literally just put it in the standard Google search. Yes. yes. And hit enter. And yes. the top the top results like should the be the old calculator and their stock options and their currency converter. Yeah. yeah. And their trans no translation. Yeah, never mind currency convert or convert also from pounds to kilograms. Yeah. I do that oh, yes. very so often. What is the current yes. rand, yeah. dollar to rand conversion? It's very cool. Yeah. If you've ever needed to convert sticks of butter into grams uh, for us uh, normal people. Um, Google's very handy for stuff like that. Yes. Or furlong per vierkant na week. I just want to see if this works on mobile. Give me a simple one there. So give me something, Stu. 20,000 leads. Open bracket. No, X. man. Co- one of those. Sin X. Sin, open bracket. X, close bracket. X, close bracket, go. Cool. Yes. W- while he's busy doing the search, you want to show us about that. your coding? Sure. Um, I, um, I recently... Uh, decided I wanted to automate a very repetitive task that I do every day. And, uh, and so I decided I'm going to learn some Apple Script. Um, mainly because the neat thing on a Mac is, is that Apple Script is accessible basically anywhere. I think there are ways to use Python to do stuff. And Bash. Uh, yeah, yeah, there, there is Bash, uh-huh. of course. Um, but um, what I needed to do is grab a selection of text and, and manipulate it. Okay. And the easiest way I could find to do that was... Uh, was Apple Script. So yeah. m- maybe you know somebody can find me a better way. Maybe there is, um, and it would be rad. I'd love to see what Apple Script looks like. Yeah, so um, Synthonic Demon should because he's quite into his Python uh, and apples. Yeah, Python, yeah. Python. So, Good. so um, I don't know if the mixer is able to grab the show notes and maybe just oh. bring my um, bring my examples of stuff on screen. Um, okay, basically, what did it do? Okay, cool. So um, th- basically, what it does is um, I now write in Markdown. I actually don't use a word processor. Um, so what Markdown is, is it's a, well, it's a l- simplified version of HTML. So instead of using Angular brackets, it uses square brackets, a lot like BB code. And, um, and so what I'm, uh, and so what I wanted to do is in Markdown, you can create a reference to a link. So mm-hmm. you give it an ID, and then you specify the URL, and then in uh, quotes, you put the name of the link. Um, and then you can use that reference. 
you put then you put te any text anywhere else in the document in square brackets, and immediately after that you put the reference in square brackets, and then it'll link that text with the link that you've specified elsewhere. So that means you can multi-link anywhere cool. else, cool. and so on and so forth. I wanted to convert my list of references into an into a list of related articles. I do that a lot. Mm -hmm. So if, when you scroll down to the bottom of an article in my BB, there's a neat list of related articles of all the stuff that I'm that, that I've linked to above. Cool. Um, so uh, and I didn't. I'm was sick and tired of copy pasting. Like you know, sometimes once, sometimes five times. Like all, all geeks, you know what? Five hours of coding is better than <laughs> 30, 30 minutes of, of, of uh, repetition. Yeah, exactly. uh, the point is also that the copy pasting is constant. It's a constant drain of, drain of time. Yes. So a little bit of coding will save in the long run. Now, yeah. I have literally have spent <laughs> three hours to save myself <laughs> half an hour. It's just far, far less boring. <laughs> yes. So I've got a I've got a counter to your um, you know five hours of coding. Yeah. <laughs> we had a, we had a saying at my previous employer. Um, you know, uh, an hour of planning. What's it? Uh, what's it? A, a week of coding could save an hour of planning. <laughs> our, our one from engineering was, five days in the lab will save an hour in the library. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Uh, I love it. Anyway, and so what I really wanted to show, I just wanted to show folks who've never seen Apple Script before, just basically what it is and, and how it works. And I don't know if we'll put this in the show notes one day, but I'll definitely put it up on my blog. Maybe next oh, we'll, year. Put, we'll do your blog. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. You have a blog? <laughs> but it blog. actually looks quite I've simple. Updated. Yeah. Uh, it took me a while to figure this out, and, and it, it took various iterations. So, um, but the, yeah. So, but now what I wanted to get to was I wanted to show you the, the string manipulation in the repeat loop. So, cool. this to cool. me. Where are we going? <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure. But I just wanted to show you that because if you compare that, I mean, you literally have to set the string delimiter. To to or the the uh, yeah the string delimiter and then you then you break on it you break the string into like a part one and a part two, um, and it can have more than those parts depending on how many delimiters there are. But I mean it's such a dirty way of manip of you know searching through a string. Is that the code? Yes. Oh my gosh! It's, it's, it's as ugly as COBOL. Yes, it is very very natural language coding. So and I've tried to even remove like here the clipboard. I've tried to remove the the. Because it says, you know, the is sometimes just an extraneous word in AppleScript. Mm -hmm. I try to remove it, wouldn't work. Just throw it through an error. I have to use the the. Well, you said that must be says use its equivalent to denote the next thing is an object. Or yeah, but it, anyway, so um, that might be because it is actually my, my, my theory with all these things, regular expressions for the win. No, that would have been cool. <laughs> that would have been so cool. But wow. This, so, but if I used another programming language, I, th I was thinking about it, and that's why I brought this up. If I was using another programming language, I would just search through the string from this, you know, because you could iterate over the characters. So I'd iterate until I found the first instance of the character I'm looking for. Cool. Then search and copy into a yeah. raw string until I found the, the next character I'm looking for. Cool. Stop. Throw away to what I don't need and keep going. With this thing, oh my giddy aunt. Anyway, cool. so that's Apple Script. Right. So <laughs> from, from so that, so Apple script, TLDR, you know, so. don't use Apple Script, use Python instead. Um, but yes. the thing is, um, if you want to, if you want to select text, like I can't think of, can you even do this in Ubuntu? Select any arbitrary text in any arbitrary application, and do something with it. I think you can set filters to do that. Yes, uh, I've got a very cool thing. I, I don't know about in Ubuntu, but Clipper, uh, in, in the, the clipboard management tool, can do a lot of cool stuff like that. Yeah, there's a lot of clipper managers you can install, and all of them have weird and wonderful things you can do with the text. Yeah. I'm pretty sure the Ubuntu one is very powerful. Um, when I last used it, you've got a lot of plugins and stuff like that. So if you've, you know, you've, if you've highlighted a, a URL, it'll pop up a thing, would you like to open it in your browser? Um, you know, all sorts of crazy crap. Uh, and like there's that. also things that I think you can plug a lot of these things into GNOME Do and stuff, which then can almost file off any other yeah, application. Saying, and that's what I'd love to do, and I'm sure that'll let me code in Python. I'm sure if you Probably. just look at VBScript on Windows, it's so much easier. Okay. okay. That, Any guys next no. Uh, no. Okay. Yeah, no. 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 Okay. It's a swear I'm word. A <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. From that, we're going to have to cut <laughs> that out. <laughs> uh, Android market sales accelerate 10 billion app downloads. Hooray. Woo and if you haven't found this out, it's, it's, it's 80 South African cents for these apps. 10 yeah. billion. I just bought billion. Minecraft. Well, yeah, now, now they're, they're having a special. Uh, 10 apps per day for the next 10 days yeah. are selling for 10 US cents. cents. So, so that's that changed at the day. moment. Yes. 
They have new apps up to date already. Yesterday they had things me. like Asphalt Five or Six. I, I don't know. And I couldn't Game install Loft. Asphalt, and I couldn't buy it because yeah, it my doesn't work Nexus on my one doesn't either. Um, support it. No, I just want to buy it because some phone, I'll, some time, I will have a phone. Mm. But they won't let you buy it if you don't have a phone that will install it. Yeah, it's a pain. so that's a bit irritating. But and yesterday, Minecraft for a whole eighty cents. Dude, I would have loved that, but my Google goodness, closed today. my wallet. Fruit Ninja. Yeah. No, I just today, bought it right now. Minecraft. Minecraft for 80 cents. Yeah, like okay. 20 minutes ago. So it, it looks like they're still keeping up the old yeah. the old ones then and just introducing the new ones. Wallet so that I can and still you know buy this. what? It runs epically well on my Galaxy Tab. Very cool. On your P1. Have you got a P1, Stu? Like the 7 inch or a 10.1? Sorry, you broke up horribly. Uh, the 10.1 inch. Okay. 10.1 yeah. inch. Yeah, cool. it, it runs beautifully on Tegra devices. Cool. Anyway, uh, I wanted to whinge about the fact that my Google wait, wait, before that, wallet I'm, is closed. I must say, one of the other apps that was on yesterday, and you can still get it, I think, SwiftKey. If you haven't used it, get it. It is beautiful. Oh. No. No, the new apps on Ninja, Fruit Ninja, yeah, just search, search, you can still search get for it Key? from the site. If you search for SwiftKey in the market, it should still be up for But it's only the mobile cents. version, not the tablet version. Yeah, it's the mobile, not the tablet. Apparently, SwiftKey is good for tablet. I use thumb keyboard. Uh, and on my phone, I use the standard gingerbread keyboard. Uh, I've, I've had it good. learning, and I'm getting yeah. to a point sometimes I can literally go start the first couple of lists and go space, 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 space. I've bought it, so it's not going to show me the price. Still says yeah. No, it says over there the mixer so, has it. Okay. You wanted to have so a go about Google cents. Wallet? Yes, I'll not have a go. Shame. Um, so uh, this was your fault. What? Uh, um, because, what did I do? <laughs> because um, Google Music launched and we were using Tor to circumvent the geographic mm -hmm. restrictions, obviously. Yeah, it worked fine for me. Anyway, and so he told me that he, just, he was able to just change his billing address in his credit card and he could buy music. And so that's exactly what I did. And I managed to buy one album. And the second album I bought, Google reversed the transaction, said I was defrauding them, and closed my Google wallet. So now I've got to appeal it, because I can't use Google Checkout at all now. What, what they did is they did a lookup against your credit card for your address. Yep. Possibly. So now, or I'm, now I'm on, technically a fraudster. Depending on which uh, address you used for that, because the address I used is actually a legit address. Um, did it's, you use it's, my, real it's my NY box that I, I set up that. in, in uh, America so that I could get my Nexus S. Dry so it's a legit address. But it's not the billing address of your credit card. Yes, it's not. Yeah. Which they haven't no, looked no, up. Normally what they I do at that point, I, they I just use deny, deny the transaction. Yeah. So Google had a slip up and they had to fix it. And this is the way that it's, they yeah. It's interesting it. that they're the going so far. Time. They're one of the first people who goes so far that at least I've heard of that you know they check your address, your billing address. No, Amazon also. Really? Well, yes. okay, Amazon does because they no. need to ship to actually no. ship things to no, you. No, so no, they no. do, but you can also change that address, and I've done this, change my address so that I can access US-only books, buy them, change my address back, yeah, download the, the books. Okay, I have mine, done when this. I changed the address, I actually came up and I tried three credit cards I own. I try they, one, which is They absurd. came up and said, but this is not I've, the billing address. So I've sorry, they haven't it. tried it with me. Steve? I've actually got my South African credit card loaded in the US uh, on Amazon. And um, I can, my account is registered at, um, I don't know how it happened. It just was, seems to be one of those things. So it accepts me ship, buying anything in the U.S. and shipping it, uh, any books and stuff like that. So my Kindle and stuff like that works perfectly <laughs> buying U.S. content in South Africa. Um, it, it, well, you work for... for ah. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 this was way before I started working for them. I think once <laughs> in a blue moon, there's a slip up. I mean, how many subscribers have they got? Yeah. yeah, exactly. So I was Ma just maybe I'm one of the lucky few. people yeah. for everything, it seems. So I'll ask you the no, same no, thing. I've, I've, someone done, no, I've from done the Amazon. same thing with Amazon with to buy Kindle Book. Yeah. It, it was really yeah. irritating. I wanted to buy the, the Rage novel. And I'm like, why is this US only? There's no reason for this book to be US only. Distribution issue. Yes. But having said it's that, I have, I have had a lot of other stores that do Spotify checks that your credit card must be. Uh, from one of the regions that they support. There's, there's lots yeah, of stores okay. that actually do it via the credit card. Mm, mm. And, it's, and it's sad. I must, uh, now that I remember, I actually used Fake Name Generator the first time around. Oops. And then when they flagged me, I switched it to NYBox, and that didn't work. Oh, okay. Yeah, but by then I, I, I closed my I account. I used NYBox from the start, so maybe that's why. Chrome overtakes me. Firefox. Yep, but according Winning. to StatCounter. So um, just a quick one here. Net Applications, which is the, uh, one of the other big stat aggregation systems, mm -hmm. say that, um, that Chrome has a little bit more growing to do, my spuddy. Um, so 
the the reason is stat counter and net applications do measurements on different ways and obviously they measure different sites stat counter measures raw page views i use this every month i guess some shameless plug uh so, sorry fried roadkill uh for my broadband every month we do articles on on browser stats and so on and so forth um and I compare it to my broadband stats. So I know that StatCounter uses raw page views. Net Applications uses uniques and uh, unique visitors to a site and weights that against the internet user base of a country. Um, so they actually process the data so a little bit. So what we're actually saying is more, uh, people use Chrome use, use the internet more. Pe well, that's what it seems to suggest, is that Chrome generates more page views than Firefox now. Okay, but both of those stats are only reliant if the... Mm website is so feeding the information to yes them. like for instance we don't feed into stat counter or net applications we feed into effective measure and google analytics you see so, so wouldn't it be more prudent if google actually of the analytics database actually starts releasing some information yeah the, the reason they probably yeah, they don't won't. do that i know they won't yeah yeah but i mean we'll get more usable information out of an analytics database a analytics mm, isn't as accurate um, uh, when we look at that, well, I, I Can't speak be audited. Yes. Um, uh, unique, it's unique visitor count mm. uh, is, uh, is, is always a little bit off compared to our audited statistics. Like when we were with Nielsen, they were sort of the same order of magnitude, but there was still, you know, there were like discrepancies. In whose favor? Uh, Google, Google is more lenient. Google will tell you you have more uniques than the other guys so? do. That's the one I want to see. <laughs> yeah, anyway. So, yeah, I just wanted to mention that. Uh, next up, Stu, is your topic. Oh, yeah. So, Kepler 22B, <laughs> what's happening there? Kepler 22B. Uh, um, I used recently, so I thought, well, may as well touch on it a little bit. Um, so, it's, a, okay, it's um, a Earth-like planet that has been confirmed now. So that's why it's called Kepler-22. It means it was the 22nd planet found by the Kepler Space Telescope. And, um, or the 22nd star, and this is the second planet or something. Anyway, it's about two and a half times the size of the Earth, and it lies right smack bang in the habitable zone around Goldie the star. Zone. The Goldilocks zone, yeah. So they reckon about an average temperature of about 22 degrees Celsius on the surface. Um, this is now the first planet that they've discovered and then confirmed with other telescopes. So, yeah, but there's another 54 uh, candidates that are in the habitable zone that are around about the right size, just waiting to be looked at. What was quite interesting, there was another article on Slashdot today, which I read, but I didn't know we were going to talk about it, where they said now, uh, NASA has actually asked uh, SETI to specifically now look at this planet for aliens. Oh, very cool. I didn't, I didn't read um, that. And give them some and funding to be able to do it as well. Hmm. The thing is, they don't, they don't know about this. Okay, so, you know, um, in our solar system, Venus and Mars both sit in the habitable zone as well. Um, Venus has got a runaway, runaway greenhouse and it's like 500 degrees Celsius on the surface. Mars has got no atmosphere and it's, um, you know, minus plenty. That's because our ancestors ruined those planets and then they moved it, to Earth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's go with it. Right, and the one they left the stove on and the other one they left the fridge open. Exactly. Yeah. Come on, you, you've seen so, space balls. They stole the atmosphere from Mars to seed Earth. Oh, the yeah, big yeah. vacuum Same cleaner. The vacuum cleaner, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anybody who hasn't um, seen space balls? Okay, watch just, okay. I yeah. um, don't know these things. How far is this planet away from us? It is Kepler a, 22? Hold on, I saw, I've got it here. It is... A couple of light years. Uh, a gazillion no, light it, years. It's far. It's far away. It's... um. Oh, man. What if I... Oh, no, I've lost the, the, the distance here. Okay, it's far Sorry, away. Uh, it's far away. No, no, it's light years away. I mean, light, light years away. It's, you know, um, 40 light years or something like that away. We're not going to visit it anytime soon. Okay, so, um, the, the, I mean, light years away. So, even Morse code between our planet and their planet is going to take us a while. Yeah. yeah well, it's yeah. going to be, yeah, Morse code, it'll be at least whatever light years yeah. times yeah. two because of return time. So, uh, if that other telescope picks up alien life, um, there could be a couple of light years yeah. Away. Yeah, if, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll be seeing a little bit into the past. Sorry, it's well, look, 600 light years away. Yeah, Sorry, but it's, it's 100, so it's 100 wow. years ahead of us. You see, this is the biggest problem with, with finding uh, okay. SETI, with, with doing SETI, no. right? Uh, 600, light, 600 years ago, 
we were not emitting any, ra- a, you know, any RF. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Planet. So even if the aliens, there were aliens on the planet, were looking directly at us, they would see us as a civilization 600 years ago. Okay. No, what, what, weren't what they were we doing 600 years ago? You said it's 100 ago? light years? No, 600, 600 light years away. Oh, 600 light years. Oh, Isn't yes, the so same true for us? So, exactly. yes. so, now so we have to hit them at exactly the right time as well as the right place. And, and remember, the Earth has been around for, what, 4 billion years? Humans have been on the planet for a couple of hundred thousand, maybe 2 million to a couple of hundred thousand years, depending where you decide on what's human. Um, so we've only been really emitting radio signals for the last hundred. And also the, there's this theory that as we get more and more advanced, the amount of loss we have will actually decrease. So that the possibility in 100 or 400 years we're going to stop having radiation go off out into the atmosphere because we'll do stuff to, to reduce the power. We'll be using uh, that and we're finding fiber optic and laser, etc. Yeah. is a lot more is a lot faster. And then, then the question about the early radio uh, waves from, from me, would they even be strong enough to reach that? No, that's another thing. So that's There's another problem. The studies that said it wouldn't be. About, what did they say, about 20 light years out or something that would be undetectable from the background noise. Okay. Oh, well, yeah, hopefully, well, maybe we find something. Maybe, maybe we, we can find something there. Yeah, just a backup, um, man. Now, we'll oh, we have a story is, finally for... We won't for, necessarily uh, look at it via the radio. We will find it in the atmospheric composition. Okay. Well, whether okay. there's going to be life or not. Mm, because life yeah. changes the atmosphere. Well, life as we know it. Oh. Who knows we don't... Life? There, there oh, isn't yeah. an ammonia-breathing... 500 oh, no. degrees dwelling species out there. We'd, oh, no, no, of course. Of course. I, I think there might course. be anyway, on Earth. I, I'm, I'm going to move us along a tiny bit into a, a topic for Johan and his Windows um, love is the MS Previews Windows Store. Yep. Okay, just let me just explain something. I, I, I enjoy Windows. Microsoft as a company is a totally different discussion. Yep. But let's go on to their Windows Store. Yes, I mean... Mac and Windows has, has been lacking behind on mobile, where you can you can format your, your and machine. Linux. Sorry? And Linux. Or PCs. Well, the whole concept of that store pretty much is what li- Linux has had for, for, for years. Since 1990, in fact. I did an article on it. Plug. Let's, you want, if, let's say you installed a fresh Linux system. Yes. And you want to install other software. There, there was a repository, and you just go click, click, yeah. click. Okay. In fact, okay. I'm actually referring to Debian. There were repositories before Debian in, in well, the 1990s. Well, just the central way of, of like Steam. I mean, Steam. Why doesn't Steam have all the applications that I've bought and need to use in there? I can actually go. Because um, Valve knows it's reg- a minefield. Register my, my, my office license key. You can activate it with Microsoft. And the next time I need it installed, click, click, run. Stardock oh. tried um, yeah, applications with Impulse, which has now been bought by GameStop, of all people. Mm. Um, so Impulse Store was also this thing to compete with Steam, but they would have Windows applications as well, Stardock stuff. For those who don't know Stardock, you actually do. You've, you have, in your travels as a Windows user, come across an application called Object Dock or Windows Blinds. Mm. That is Stardock, mm. all right? So they make those. You've probably pirated it. Please pay them for it. Um, <laughs> well, Windows Blinds I actually did buy. Yeah, so... It was very good at one stage. I mean, really, uh, ch- totally changed before Windows 7 the way we'd look at Windows. Yeah, the interesting comments from the IRC, and this is actually a philosophy I tend to agree with. You know, even though I love the way that um, Debian, Ubuntu, and those guys use, and even Steam, use the centralized repository, the internet is a repository. Mm. And your URL bar is your gateway to the content. Mm. Um, but yeah, so, that, um, what I also just said in well, the IRC is that... But there, hey? Um, because I found a lot of interesting software just by searching, using the search tools through Pac-Man and things like that, or um, apt-get, mm. to try to find the, uh, searching through the descriptions looking for software. I, I remember doing it in the old days with Mandrake, going yeah. through the RPM thing, and it's like, hmm, w- what is out there? Just by reading, it's like, actually, that will be quite interesting to try. Exactly. Yeah, so exactly. the internet might be the repo, but it is kind of hard to search through the entire internet. Yes. No, At Google's least. been perfecting that over, what, 10, almost 10 years. No, it's 10 years now. Uh, having the thing s- is, if it's in a, if it's in a, if, you know, if that package is in a Ubuntu or a Arch Linux or whatever, so, you know, default repository, you, you know, it works. It, it, there's a lot of people looking at it. It works. It's the most popular one. Mm. So it's a good start. Yes. Mm. And if yes. it's in things like the software center, then it's then rated as back. well and reviews. It, it, 
to come back, okay, one must also be fair about the fact that probably the PC platforms haven't exploited this very good because of bandwidth restrictions. Well, so well, Windows now, hasn't done it themselves, but you've been able to go to other, other kind of repos for them. Um, what do you mean Windows or Microsoft? Do you mean Microsoft? Microsoft, yeah. Yes. I that remember, doesn't have kind it of a... a but I remember an app who would check for <laughs> updates to my apps. Yes. So, I don't remember its name there now, but Google, a Windows app. Pa Google Pack. Yeah, um, I don't, yeah. And, and then it would go, hey, listen, your Firefox is out of date yeah. before Firefox had an auto-update or whatever. Well, well, my question would just be, sorry, Tom, I know you <laughs> want to make a point. My question would just be, I hope the Microsoft Store will be open enough that people like Chrome can submit the application into the store, even if it's at zero charge, that you can then have well, one. Y yes, I'd, okay. I'd, I'd I doubt there would be zero two charge. Two things with this. One yeah. is, will it allow Third open party. devs? Well, let's say if I've got an open source app, can I put it in there? Yes. Yeah, because That's you can't thing. do that with Windows Phone at the moment, yeah. I believe. Uh, if also the other question was, now, this, it, they were trying to push through the secure computing system where you can buy a laptop and the only thing it can run is, is Windows. What, Windows. Yeah, and that got broken. Yeah, I know it's broken, <laughs> but this ties directly into that. So I also don't want to have these things that they're locked in forever. Okay, yes. Um, and my third thing is, what's this going to do to stores? Things like incredible connections, stuff like that. Yeah, that sells software. Probably the same thing that it's busy that, that things are busy doing to bookstores and, and game and music stores. stores and game stores. Yeah. yeah so those, those stores will need to I start. I mean, really, how much software yeah. does incredible connection actually sell? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, it's, that's like, true. it's mainly like operating systems and antivirus. Yeah. Yeah. But and then so, uh, um, a lot of argue, you don't buy OS from incredible corruption because no, because it's ridiculously comes, expensive. It comes already with a machine. I yep. bought mine. I bought a, a license from Prophecy because I built my machine from scratch. Mm. OEM right. licenses. It's like oh, yeah, half the price. Yes. Well, no, uh, but otherwise, yeah, your antiviruses, was. they sell probably quite a bit, and then games. Yeah, yeah. Oh. yeah. No, but okay, games, those, those stores will have to start competing a little bit differently. You know, the, uh, I've been saying it with the bookstores. I don't know how, but they need to start competing somewhere else if they're busy, you know, facing the troubles well, with e-books and so on. Maybe they, they should need start off with e-books. They need to provide a service. So they need to provide a value-added service yes. to the customer. Yes. Uh, so so it's give the customer... <laughs> incentive to go and buy from them sell coffee yeah, exactly yeah so where, like exclusive books exclusive and centurion books where lets you, you, drop, you know let you take the book and sit in the coffee shop yes. and yeah. Uh, yeah. things like that and also like i know with exclusive books they not so much anymore i've noticed but they used to have quite the, the staff used to know about books exactly. so I've, I've i know you used to still still know about, about okay, books. I've, their screening process is usually yeah. pretty good it's okay. My, my previous experience is that it's gone down. Not so much, is it? But it, it all it's depends. It, it depends on the store you go to. Mm. So it all depends who you land up with. And I'm pretty sure when the pr if the pressure starts piling on them, they do things like you know book clubs and ex you know you know make it more social and uh, you know try to track people into the store on the social aspects. Of yeah, things. Or they, they should. Question with those. Yeah. Let, let's say Why everything not? does go ebook, and you're buying from Amazon. Mm. Why would you go into a bookstore? It, because it, sometimes I've, it's I've been reading, oh, I read an article on this. People, they've, they've found a lot of people go into bookstores, look at the books, kind of, you know, browse through the books. Some people take photos, other people take notes on their cell phones to go buy the ebook from Amazon. I use but my if, barcode if scanner. I've, and I have done this. <laughs> but if, I've walked into exclusive, looked at the book, um, read the first if chapter. If no one's and buying it, that bookstore will go. Yes. So I'm saying, how do the bookstores, so let's say they do attract the people to find the books. How do they get their... 5% or 10% or from Amazon to, to still validate what they're doing? Currently, uh, currently ebook readers are uh, pretty poor in, in color things like that. Um, you know, you know e-ink and color e-ink is not just, is not available really at the mm, moment. Yeah. So the big thing is your full color uh, glossy books. Yeah, but we can all see in five years, we're going to be there. Yeah, but oh no, true, true, and then they're going to have to compete. But you know, some people would just still like a physical copy of a book. Yeah. And that, that, that works in some cases, shop. I agree, a physical copy of a textbook is so much better than a digital copy. I have, I've been using digital copies this year. Man, I miss a it physical hurts. copy. It's so much easier to search through a physical one than a digital mm -hmm. one. Yeah. In any case, how, how's a color, even a color e-ink e e uh, Kindle uh, is not going to look very good as a coffee table book. No, true, definitely. Yeah, but you can have it changing and moving. and It's just not the same. It's, we don't know, the coffee table is the book. Yeah. Uh, Never mind having books on your coffee table. Uh, the coffee table becomes the book. What I'm saying book. is, yes, because we, we saw that, but going forward in, in 10 or 20 years' time, you're not going to have 
uh, two years more to make paper. So yes, then we're going to be forced. <laughs> While we're yeah, sitting like on Mars. We don't have a shortage of trees. Where are we going to sit on Mars? I mean, there's nothing nothing grows there. Then you're going to have to have... rocks. Yeah. Ground them up and make some paper. <laughs> cool. I, can't anyway. f- um, I, I, I just went through the Windows Store agreements briefly. Uh, I didn't do a, a thorough search. I can't find any mention of the word free. That doesn't mean it's not possible. But it also looks like it's really focused on Metro UI apps. Yes. So you, you have, have to, to have develop Metro. Metro. In order to be listed, because the then it will work on their phones as well. Okay, interesting. That, that yeah. Well, that's then no, file. well, phones, tablets, the whole thing. What was it? You mentioned the Google project. Was it a Google project that, give it that you could download all those applications as one and then install it on Windows apps? Oh, Google Pack, which they've discontinued. Google Pack. Uh, oh yeah, that thing. They discontinued about. I, I used to use it because it. But it as time I, I goes by, all half the apps were self-updating anyway. So actually, the the point of it actually went away. Okay. Um, well, what was quite nice about those the apps that I didn't use regularly, like Adobe, I, I changed enough to, on Windows, don't use it that often, mm-hmm. um, and it will just keep it updated in the background. So that you know, now every time I click on Adobe, it offers me an update. When in the old days, it would have updated it automatically in the background. Um, anyway, uh, how do we? Almost lost Doom 3 and ID for good. Yeah, Johan, you actually um, saw this article. Um, take us through it. What, well, uh, as quickly, as it was an opensource.com article that came through today. Um, what caught my eye was the way that this guy wrote the story was around the source code uh, was, was scheduled to be released with Rage because that's apparently what ID has been doing over the years. Yes. When, they, mm-hmm. Correct. when they release their next engine, they release the, the source, source code, code for the previous, previous engine. One. Yeah. Um, ID then pulled it back on consultation of their attorneys because there was some code in it that was um, licensed by a third party, I think, Creative. Creative Labs, yeah. Creative Labs. But the way the guy wrote the article was really nice, actually backing the fact that ID went and rather pulled it back and actually making a good statement that instead of what a lot of, a lot of the other guys are going with, closing your eyes, let's go ahead, then screwing up, getting sued the pants off them, and then next time just stops releasing source code, mm. ID actually... By saying, okay, we were supposed to do this, guys, sorry, we're going to hold it back. We're sorting out this license code. Let's release it later so you guys can get it and run with it as you want. It's just a good way to do it. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of people could actually learn from that way of approach. And a lot and of people can learn a lot of things from Carmac. Yeah, th- th- there's yes. a gaming journalist, so I almost punched a gaming journalist today, t- oh. tell me, telling me that Carmac, what that, the id software needs to, something about firing John Carmack and... Like no, they said mean no. things about John Carmack. That's all I register now. Well, look, I just he, went red he, with rage. He, he, I would too. The problem is, he is, he is he's very bright in a lot of good things, but then he's also, like all bright people, can Has sometimes no personality. No, con- <laughs> be convinced of his own genius. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> what what g- guy he, Katama uh, that he was going? No, that was John Ramiro. Oh, I'll put the wrong John Ramiro, right, Tim. Sorry, oh, <laughs> sorry, no, no, sorry. No, 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 don't drag Dai Katana into this now. Um, no, but I think the, the argument was generally that Rage was a very subpar game, and I disagree with that. Um, eh, it's not subpar. Eh, it's not subpar, it's sub excellent. <laughs> anyway, mm-hmm. so but, but it's what crap, what? Pants crappingly eerie. There we go. That uh, was just one section. Yeah, um, you, you had a question about the Carmax Reverse, which is the piece of code in question here. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Earlier uh, when we were discussing Stuart, the article. you were mentioning was a change of a couple of lines? Yeah, uh, on John, I'm, I'm, uh, he might have been exaggerating, but if you read the, the, twi- the tweet from John Carmack, it seemed to be a rather trivial change. You know, a couple of lines of code, four or five lines of code. Yeah. And now, uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> mute it. Mute it. How many YouTubes can you open at the same time? <laughs> no, I, I clicked on some doubler thing that Jan pasted a link in. Well yes, done. I'll, I'll do that now. I improved whoever put the kicker in. Um, <laughs> no, 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 now, what's interesting about the, about the Carmax reverse is, A, it carries John Carmack's name, but it is actually patented by Creative Labs. Okay. Um, and the way this happened was that it's, ex- it's almost exactly the same as the whole Newton-Leibniz fiasco. Newton developed something first. And Leibniz developed something in parallel, but published his, uh, but you know, later, and then published his findings or, or his techniques later. Mm. But he did it absolutely in parallel. So he didn't copy from Newton, as and far then as we can tell. Newton yes. told him that's very derivative. <laughs> yeah. Did him. Yeah. Anyway, and so um, what what happened here is exactly that: is Creative Labs put something together. I think mm. it was like in 1997. And they presented it. So now this is where the sticking point comes in. They presented it at a conference 
and then they patented it. All right? So, but now they still hold the patent. Um, but there's an argument to be had here, but nobody's ever argued mm. it because they don't want to test it, really. Mm. Um, and so when, when Carmack developed Doom 3, or Ed Carmack, he didn't do it on his own. Yeah. When Ed developed Doom 3, they used Carmack's technique, which um, because he brought it to the public's attention, he got to name it. Yes. And people started calling it the Carmack's Reverse. And um, it's, a, it's a neat technique for, for um, drawing shadows on the screen. And uh, Creative Labs went, hang on a second, that's what we did. And it's our patent. And so the way they resolved it for Doom 3 and the it Tech 4, four. In 3 engine, it Tech 4, it Tech 4 engine, I'm going with that, um, is um, by, Send cross, hate mail to by cross-licensing. Okay. So they agreed to include creative EAX technology in Doom um, in exchange for not getting the pantsuit off them. But I mean, creatives move along. They're not doing graphics anymore. So the last thing for them is actually just to go ahead and say, you know what, there we go, go for it. They don't do graphics yes, anymore. Yes, but they own it and they want money and it incentivizes so, but, but people no, to but do... But no, I mean, the whole thing. So now instead of the technique Let's getting used... to Apple. Now instead of the technique getting used, all that research money and the fact that Carmack came up with it on his own, instead of it getting used, now what he's done is he's worked around it. It's an efficient way of drawing shadows. So he's probably replaced it with a less efficient way now because our current cards can handle it. Yeah. So... Yeah. Oh, well, let's see. Anyway, so it's a very sad situation I just thought if... The whole thing... Tells you more. Software patents are Crack. broken. Yeah. <laughs> if anyway. you get, uh, just uh, search on opensource.com. Uh, I just thought the article was very well written. Um, just summarizing what happened and then the view from the writer to say, well, he thinks it was a good idea to actually hold back. Let the attorneys yeah. fight it out and take yeah, it from there. Yeah, agreed. That was, it was the right decision okay. for them to hold it back and then just fix it up properly. Now it's released, no issues, and now we can wait and see what people do with it. Take four. Yes. I mean, because, I mean, it was a good engine. Yes. I didn't actually play through the entire Doom, but I, I sat by the sidelines and watched people. It's very cool. But anyway. it was awesome. Yeah, th that's it for our main show. Into so our kicker. Into our kicker, indeed. Just very quickly. Was that the um, music we listened to now? Well, yes. it, it comes without music. I proved it. <laughs> <laughs> so oh. this, is what it, this is what it was originally. Oh, are we allowed to watch this? Yeah. Yeah, there's no, wow. there's no Just music. Go for it. And the music pieces. I added is Wagner. I, I mean, think. talk us through us. Okay, so this is the quad. quad. These are quadcopters. Which ones uh, are these now? The, the Apple one or the... The uh, Apple quadcopter. No, 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 it's not, not the, the quadcopter that you can control parrot. with your iPhone. Oh, no, no, no. no. These, these are built by some university. Uh, and basically okay. what they're looking at here is swarm uh, intelligence. Swarm okay. quadcopters. Yes. Oh, that is awesome. Cool. Yeah, play so it. Go for it. Sorry, while, um, while it's playing. Okay, uh, swarm intelligence would be... Uh, it's an, an artificial intelligence technique so that you can get intelligence from basic behavior. So you have little little bots like this yeah. that have fairly basic rules to them, but they work together. Yeah. Uh, usually they start off by deciding on a leader and then the leader dishes out tasks to the rest of the people or the rest of the bots. And then they achieve the eventual big task that the leader knows, but the, the sub bots don't. You, they you, achieve the big task by um, dividing in, it into smaller tasks. And, and the way it also okay. comes out, you, you get emergent so behavior. Yeah, you it? get emergent behavior from this. So but you the, don't the types of things a, they look at to model uh, would be things like ants, uh, ant bees. colonies, and ant bees. Ant colony optimization and things like that, you don't have a leader. It's just intrinsic. The, yeah. the rules are intrinsic in the way you, you know, place pheromones yes. and things but, like but that. You and can the behaviors have, emerge out of these simple rules. Yes, but you can have different kinds of ants. No, for, no, of for course. instance, you, you can, can have um, perhaps you, you can have ants that die uh, or ants that eventually die. And then you can have people that uh, corpse um, undertakers. So corpse collectors yeah, you, that, that do those sorts of things. And they, they have some interesting techniques for that as well. There's, some very, there's lots of very interesting research yes. on okay, now, um, can we play my education and things like that. And, and I know behavior. Tux, Tux is doing a lot of work with swarm but now, uh, intelligence are, are these, as well. Are these planes now all independent? Yes. Yes. They so do their their little task. They do independently. With. They know what they're supposed to do. Th they, they know go up, about they the other it. task, uh, the other thing, and they can yeah. speak to the other one. But each of them has their rules, and they speak to the other one, going, "Okay, what are you doing now? Okay, now from what you're doing and what I'm doing, an emergent thing occurs." So it's okay. like, no, but what okay. they're actually talking about in future versions, they want, I think, it was hundreds or thousands of these working in Unition, um, Union. to achieve Union. what. 
Well, sorry, the, the, just the, give me an application. The, the, we would um, okay, well, something I've seen with, with quadcopters. Okay, good point. Uh, search and rescue, um, I've seen for little uh, vehicles that do mapping mm. of an area and then try to get around to, to try and find a path for a human to take to get to the people and get them out. Yeah. And another Mind application theory. I saw recently, I think today or yesterday, was uh, quadcopters doing construction. So yeah. they, they actually go and pick up bricks and then do construction. And they'll work together. So, yeah. so if it's not it's heavy, you, five of them will then pick it up. And the, the, the big problem they have there is avoiding each other. Yeah. And with that, <laughs> what happens okay. is you, you actually okay. get optimized use of energy. So you don't have one that's more powerful than it needs to be. Yeah. You now have, by them swarming together, you have the least amount of power. You need. Like uh, migrating birds, yes, for like example. Ants. And uh, the, uh, just imagine the military implica implications oh, of yeah. having hundreds uh, of thousands of robots. Uh, yeah. Drones. <laughs> Sky well, like somebody Sky says, at the, the end of uh, The Matrix. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I fixed this video because I thought it was incredibly boring to just watch them do that. So I, um, it, let's, let's see Is if this that where work. that came from? Yes. I was like, so so click, the, click the play button on the left. It should have started playing automatically. Okay, click the one on the left. Now click the one on the right. <laughs> <laughs> Right of the oh, Valkyries okay. makes right. anything, yeah. anything better. Got the music. No, this is uh, copyright free. It's Wagner. It's Wagner. Yeah, played by who? That's normally where they're By called. Wagner. Well, no, it's composed by, by Wagner. By Wagner's Orchestra of Doom from the <laughs> yeah. 1700s. Well done. Well done. <laughs> well done. Submit High record. five. <laughs> cool. Uh, you guys, that will be our last show of the year. Cool. Uh, go watch one of our other videos. They will be there on YouTube. Yeah, or uh, even today's one got uploaded, or last week's one got uploaded today. today. And I know within like an hour or two had 12 views. Wow. People so, were waiting for it. Yeah, yeah I know. People were waiting for Sorry it. Sorry we um, took so long. Anticipation. <laughs> um, or go like our Facebook page or go follow us on Twitter and we'll or let you know when the next show is. Google Plus. Yes. And may you get all the technology you ever wanted for Christmas Day. <laughs> and if people don't give it to you, go buy it. <laughs> yep, yep. All right. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Uh, Th thanks for joining us, Stu. Thanks, um, thanks wait, I've just got one last thing to yeah. say. All right. I found the tweet by John Carmack, right? Um, and he said, this demonstrates the, idiocracy, the idiocy of the patent. The workaround added four lines of code and changed two. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Well done. Okay, well done. Go cool. Carmack. <laughs> thanks for joining us, Stu. Stu, where Pleasure can people guys. reach you? Sorry? Where can people reach you? Tell people where they can find you Stu to discuss. At Stu underscore ZA. At on Twitter underscore ZA and uh, have you been uh, updating your blog recently no I haven't um, it's been a little bit busy and internet's been a bit flaky but um, once everything comes down from Pretoria on next weekend um, I should get back into that yeah very cool 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 thank you Gareth for coming and to join us on the other side of the mixing desk it's a pleasure where still can, weird sitting here <laughs> where can people find you uh, on Twitter at Hawkeys ZA one word no underscores uh, I'm also on Google Plus if you can try and find me there. I have a Facebook account. Don't bother finding me there. Okay, I, cool. I don't use it. Do you, and your blagger blags, you are updating that every now and again? Every now and again. Also, hawkyza.wordpress.com because I'm too lazy to uh, do my own hosting. Uh, every now and again, and I see it's also climbing in hits. Uh, interesting point on that. Way to get more hits. Blog something about the latest Ubuntu. You will double your hits If you say in something day. negative, that's even better. Oh, then you'll get comments. Yeah. Then I, get I remember a while back. ago I put up how to fix ATR drivers, and it's got a stupid amount of hits on it. Yeah. Cool. Anyway. Cool. All right. Uh, Johan Els, thanks for coming in. Thank you for having me. Uh, yeah, and you, you, you drove in quite fast and far. Yeah, airport's quite far away. <laughs> but I'm here. I'm here. Cool, cool. Where can people find you? Uh, try Google Plus, plus Johan underscore Els. Cool. Tim Hawk. Yeah. Thank you uh, for, for everything for the year. Uh, for those who don't know, I don't normally head up the show. Tim does. <laughs> uh, so, so, yeah, thank you very much for Let's Talk. Cool, no, Let's no, Talk. Thanks keep for bringing it all together. The studio. Uh, Happy Merry Christmas, Blessed New Year, all that stuff. Where yeah, can people yeah, find you? Uh, just go Twitter, Tim underscore Hawk. Google Plus, Tim Hawk. Cool. Uh, I'm Jan from Yellen. You can find me also on Twitter at Jan V Z A. Because yeah, do you think about that. Don't 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 ask See, me why it's, it's so not, complicated. It's not it's just you. <laughs> I'm on Google Plus as well. Uh, <laughs> so just Jan from I don't know how many others there are on there. I haven't actually looked. And uh, I'm right for my broadband. Mybroadband.co.za. Uh, 
He is. If you want to know writer. any of the exact links, go to our wiki at wiki.lessortnetwork.tv. Yeah, all our guests, all our hosts, uh, hosts are there, and there will be direct links to. And all if you're watching accounts. us on YouTube, the link should be in the doobly doo. Cool. The what? Yes. The doobly doo. The underbar. The uh, description. The comment at the bottom. In it's my a, pants. It's a doobly doo. Yeah, in, in my pants. <laughs> <laughs> and we got to thank the, the mixer. Thank the you, mixer. mixer. <sighs> Sorry, there's a lot of thank yous because this is the last show of the year. So uh, that's so that's all for now. Go check out our other shows. Let's talk Afrikaans. Let's talk sports. And uh, over the holiday period, go catch up on all the other shows mm. that you've missed. And we will be back um, in the second half of January next year. Cool. Thank you. There you have it. Cheers. May the cheers, cheers. be with you.